Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, I want to discuss with you a whole bunch of rumours concerning NVIDIA's Ampere architecture. Ampere, of course, is the successor to the Turing series of GPUs from NVIDIA, and will likely form the basis of the RTX 30 series of cards. We know for certain that they will be leveraging the 7nm process, most likely from Samsung, for the production of Ampere, and the rumour has it, thanks to Igor's lab and his sources, that we will see the cards launch in the first half of 2020. But other than that, there has been precious little information for certain of what we can expect for Ampere, other than, well, it's faster than Turing. That's about the only thing we can really predict. But in the past few days, there have been a massive amount of rumours that have been circulating regarding Ampere. And as far as I can tell anyway, they all stem from a post on Reddit. This anonymous poster claims that NVIDIA have been uh, briefing its board partners, which of course would be companies like Asus and MSI and whomever else, on what they can be expecting with the next generation of cards. So since this post has now subsequently been nuked from Reddit, uh, it still has been reposted in several other places, and people have been emailing me asking what my thoughts are regarding these rumours. So, right off the bat, let's just put this into context. Next year, in my opinion, is going to be crazy for GPUs. It really is. Not only do we have Ampere from uh, NVIDIA, but AMD's GPU schedule is going to be absolutely just chock-a-block. It's going to be nuts. Uh, in the early part of next year, from what I'm told anyway, we can expect big Narve, Narve 12, which allegedly anyway, if you believe all the rumours, is going to put out performance roughly on par with, let's say, the RTX 2080 Ti, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. In the latter part of that same year, we're expecting the second generation of RDNA cards from AMD, uh, Narve 2x and i've been told that narve 23 is quote an nvidia killer we'll have to wait and see of course how it does fare against ampere and then to confuse things even further we've not only got the next generation of consoles but we also have intel ready to step into the fray now with intel they are probably not going uh, for the high end uh, in 2020. From what I'm hearing, that's going to be in 2021. But even so, it looks like they can make a compelling case for themselves in the low to mid range. So basically what I'm saying is that NVIDIA will be facing a lot of competition. And there were several criticisms that people levered regarding Turing. The first is the pricing. The second, of course, is the performance of ray tracing. I think few would disagree that Control, for example, looks quite frankly stunning in 4K with ray tracing enabled, but what's less stunning is the frame rate. It really does dive down when you enable ray tracing. And of course, NVIDIA does have technology like DLSS, but that's something that they're still progressing on, and it does make the image quality softer. Few would disagree. The other problem that NVIDIA faced, of course, with ray tracing was, despite their claims that it just works. Well, it didn't just work. Um, it took quite a number of months before we started to see a good selection of titles which featured ray tracing. Now, the selection isn't too bad at all. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Battlefield 5, Control, and blah, 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 blah. And some of them does look pretty amazing. But it took a long time, and people basically kind of figured they paid a lot more money for a card which was a bit faster than Pascal. That's how a lot of early adopters felt, and it's very hard to disagree with that sentiment. But times have changed, and Turing has definitely gotten better uh, in terms of the ray tracing support, and arguably Super has improved the value proposition, although I wouldn't exactly still call it stellar. But as I mentioned a moment ago, they will be facing a lot more competition. Anyway, so what are these rumours? So I'll get into what I feel about the legitimacy in just a moment because there are a plethora of these rumours. Uh, so let's go through them. By the way, this is also an article as well because it's quite wordy. So I've decided to uh, plonk, of course, the link in the description of this video. This is a copy and paste, essentially, of what 
uh, was originally said, so I'm going to quote it verbatim. Since the beginning of this month, which of course would be October, NVIDIA has been giving out technical paperwork to tech companies about the upcoming Ampere GPUs. They will be receiving first reference board in silicon by the end of this month, so they can start designing and testing the next AIB cards for the Arch architecture. Ampere should please just about everybody, which is a pretty bold statement, and some of the big points we have had communicated to us, significantly faster RAST performance, higher than Turing gains, massive ray tracing performance increase, expanded VRAM capacity on a range of SKUs, dialed down TDPs on many cards, however the high end is still 250 watt, increased core clocks, they're saying 200 megahertz over Turing, uh, the bad slash neutral news is prices have decreased a little bit on some of the more unpopular skew, uh, unpopular SKUs. The uh, X80 Ti, which I'm presuming is going to be called the 3080 Ti, and I will uh, refer to it as such throughout this video, will see a price drop along with the X3080. Once again, I'm going to presume that's the 3080. But cards such as the uh, 3070 and below will remain unchanged. Overclocking, it uh, looks like you're going to be able to get about an extra 100 to 200 megahertz above the SKU. However, you will still have the upper frequency limits, which means about 2200 megahertz on ambient cooling is roughly what you're going to be getting at best. Voltage limits are lower, so you're going to have one watt, sorry, one volt or fewer uh, going to the core. And please be aware that the information today is subject to change between now and release, depending on what NVIDIA decide to do. Many points are sensitive to market forces, price, TDP, and VRAM capacity, especially, end quote. So regarding the performance claim, what we are almost certain of is that it is using 7NM. Uh, skipping over the clock frequency for the performance gains, because obviously a couple of hundred megahertz isn't going to cut it, what would improve things is simply density. So not only could they pack in more SMs, but if you look at the ray tracing claims, they could potentially add in more RT cores per SM. Currently, they only have one ray tracing core per SM, and it's potentially possible they could go with two RT cores per SM, or those ray tracing cores are just more efficient. But given that they will have a whole bunch more SMs anyway, maybe NVIDIA are going to find type, some type of balance. Turing also was much more efficient in terms of traditional rasterization performance than Pascal. Not only did it have better compression, but it did have several features. Variable rate shading, for example, plus several other features on the Turing architecture. And in addition to that, simultaneous integer slash floating point execution. So Turing was faster than Pascal. The problem is it wasn't a massive leap over Pascal when it comes to traditional rasterization performance. So the claims here do also make sense. And it would probably tempt owners who have been sticking with their 1080 Ti's to go to, let's say, the 3080 Ti's. This leaves us with several questions. The first is, what would NVIDIA like to achieve with Ampere? And the second is, well, is any of this information that was posted here accurate? Regarding what NVIDIA would like to achieve, of course, they would like to continue their dominance in the GPU market. And it's hard to argue that they are the company with the largest mindshare. And there's several ways that NVIDIA have achieved this. Recently, of course, they've been seemingly trying to rebrand FreeSync to G-Sync. Now, to my understanding, and I may be incorrect here, but when you have those logos such as G-Sync and FreeSync, monitor vendors, Samsung, whomever, need to cough up money to actually plonk those on the box. So, logically speaking anyway, they would want to pay for the brand which has the most impact, which is probably one of the reasons that uh, a lot of monitor vendors are placing the G-Sync logo on the box. It's kind of ironic, given AMD are the ones who pushed FreeSync, and then NVIDIA are the ones who get the benefit from this branding, but, well, that seems to be what's happening currently. And also, another thing that NVIDIA have done in almost every generation, there are some exceptions, they've had the fastest single-card product. So the reason that that's so important is because reviewers will almost always want to use the fastest card when testing any other component. Think about it. 
when the 3950X launches and we are going to be seeing reviews against, let's say, the 9900K or a 3900X and so on and so on, would a reviewer prefer to use an RX 5700 XT or a RTX 2080 Ti? Of course, the latter is going to be the one they choose. Not because they have a preference necessarily for NVIDIA over AMD, but because the RTX 2080 Ti is the fastest card. So if you're testing CPU stuff, you will want to make sure that you're not bottlenecked by the GPU. Furthermore, influencers, YouTubers, and so on and so on will almost always want to do their builds with, you know, the highest end graphics cards as well. So obviously, as a consumer, when you're watching this content, when you're reading these reviews, you consistently see that NVIDIA have the best performance card available. Now, admittedly, if you're more familiar with technology, you're going to say, but hey, that 5700 is a better value card than this one, and so on and so on. And you are 100% right. The thing is, though, that not everyone follows technology so closely. So at the end of the day, whether it's right or wrong, people just assume NVIDIA equals the best performing brand. And I suspect that NVIDIA, therefore, will likely want to achieve much the same thing here. They'll probably try to release a card which is the fastest card available on the market. Now, the question is whether they can achieve this or not based upon uh, some rather significant strides, it looks like, on the behalf of AMD with the second generation of Narve. Uh, once again, I've been told that Narve 23 is an NVIDIA killer. The question is, though, is this reality? Can they really achieve this? I think Intel's out for 2020. I think NVIDIA are going to simply be facing pressure on the low to mid-range product segments of the market from Intel, as well as, of course, AMD also, which is fine. That's great because it helps to keep them uh, cheaper in those particular markets. In fact, one can make a very compelling argument that when Generation 12 uh, CPUs launch, and obviously the successive generations from Intel and equivalents from AMD, it may be a much less profitable uh, for NVIDIA in those particular tiers, because at the end of the day, why would you buy a discrete GPU when you could pick up an APU from AMD or a CPU from Intel, and it gives you reasonable 1080p, uh, 1080p performance. So I feel that NVIDIA will want to keep the performance crown uh, with at least one of their products, most likely the most powerful GPU on the market, and furthermore that they will also want to push ray tracing performance as much as they possibly can with the next generation. I think that Turing was almost like the experiment of like the prototype of how to implement it, and most likely Ampere is going to be the perfected version, the tweaked version, the enhanced version. Whether that turns out to be true or not, well, we'll have to wait. As for these rumours, and whether they are accurate, well, I can certainly see that the timelines match. Igor's lab is telling us that it will be the first half of 2020 that Ampere launches, and to be fair, he's been pretty accurate in the past with NVIDIA stuff. So, let's assume we see the cards launch in April, and that's not a rumour from me, that's just a pure, like, you know, stab in the dark. Well, I do know that AIBs typically get briefed of what the goals are for a specific architecture, what the enhancements are, and so on, before they receive engineering samples. I know that this happened with Narve as well. Um, so, it would make sense for them to be briefed now. The thing I mostly have against these rumours, though, is it seems to be almost like a wish list of what people would want from Ampere. So, what I mean by that is reduced cost on the high-performance tier products, like the RTX uh, 3080 Ti, 3080. The fact that we are going to be seeing improved ray tracing performance, improved rasterization performance. Who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want more memory on their GPU? And, of course, also lower power consumption, less heat output, blah, 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 blah. Basically, what I'm saying is, while a lot of the stuff is logical, after all, with Servid NM, you can presume it's going to have less power consumption, for example, 
it also seems to be kind of what people would expect from a GPU. Do I think it's legitimate? Well, honestly, I would go into it with some scepticism, some salt available. However, I also wouldn't be surprised, even if this is not from an inside source, if many of the points listed here turn out to be accurate. But anyway, I think that's just about it for this video. If you've enjoyed it, drop a like on the video because it helps us out a ton and of course get subscribed to the channel. Uh, you can also click the bell icon if you are already a subscriber because unfortunately in YouTube land, subscribing just isn't enough anymore. But I'm going to wish you all an amazing day. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.